All right, hey everybody, we want to welcome you to our first Wirecast Wednesday. We've got uh, the Pender Pendragons joining us in Andy Welsh's class up there. So uh, thanks to those guys for joining us live and everybody else watching this on the recording. Uh, I start with a, a theoretical question for you. What does Wirecast, Onions, and Ogres have in common? Andy, any 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 answers from uh, from the Pendragons? Layers, 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 layers is right. Good. Okay, I thought my joke would be bad. It wasn't. Thank you. Ah, that makes me feel better. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about layers in Wirecast for uh, for our first Wirecast 101. Um, how to manage them for some of you? You are a, a little more advanced. You might be on. Uh, might be dealing more with the master layer, so uh, the layers at the bottom of the screen. And for others, really what I'm going to focus on today is the layers within each shot and how they affect each other. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, share my screen here so that everybody can see what I am what I am talking about. And uh, as you see, I've already got my scoreboard set up down here at the bottom. Uh, I've got a St. Paul and Wood River uh, football game that's uh, going to get going. So the first thing that we have to do, uh, obviously, is get uh, the the scoreboard set up. That's in a different uh, Zoom session. I'm not going to go over that one again. Uh, but the first thing that we always want to do is we want to bring our camera in. And I'm working with Wirecast 9. Um, for those of you that have 9, one of our new schools, you've got 9. A lot of our older schools that have been around for a while maybe have already upgraded to 9. Um, before we get too far into this, a word about upgrading for Wirecast. If your laptop and machine is currently running on Sierra or earlier, uh, Wirecast 5, 6, and 7 will work fine on Sierra. If you update your operating system to High Sierra, uh, Wirecast 5, 6, and 7, including 7.7, 7, uh, they don't like High Sierra and uh, Telestream made eight to work with uh, to work with High Sierra, and then they came out with nine right away too. So all of our new schools are on Wirecast nine. Uh, some of our older schools have already upgraded. If you uh, need to upgrade, or perhaps somebody accidentally upgrades the operating system on the laptop for your streaming, uh, that is a paid upgrade to go from wherever you are. Uh, unless you're on Wirecast 8. I think if you go from 8 to 9, but you shouldn't be upgrading if you're on 8. Uh, but if you're on 7 or earlier, and uh, perhaps coming up for, uh, hi Sarah, you're late by the way. I had a visitor. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm muting you now, by the okay. way. Um, but if in any effect, it is a paid upgrade, $275 that we can get you, which is cheaper than if you guys just uh, go at it and, and buy it on your own. Um, and then we can get the installation uh, in a snap for you. So um, that's kind of a, an upgrade thing. Uh, so don't upgrade to High Sierra unless you are prepared to do the upgrade in Wirecast to get to Wirecast 9. So I'm dealing with 9. First thing that we're going to do within our layers is uh, bring in our mini recorder. And uh, you have it. You can favorite things, which is kind of fun in Wirecast 9. So I've already favorited uh, the mini recorder and the audio codec and also Wirecast Go as well as my screen capture. So we'll talk about all of those things here in just a second. So mini recorder first, add that to my shot and I'm going to move my, move that down just a little bit so that I can show you that we have both sides. Uh, I've got my preview side on the left. I've got live on the right. That hasn't changed or anything like that. I can now edit my, my shot here. So I double click on it and I can bring it up. And the first thing that comes over here is my shot layers. So what I want to do is I'm just going to add layers and then I can move up and down, move the layers up and down with the, these arrows, but I can just add a layer by clicking that plus, or I could take it away with a minus. So I want to add my audio codec in here, which again is one of my favorites. So I have already clicked it, made it yellow, and I hit add, and now my audio codec is in here. I know I've gotten already done some uh, support calls with people saying we have our soundboard plugged in for our announcers, but we're also still hearing what the camera is hearing. Here's probably the first thing to, that's a, that's a break, as we saw in the promo video, that's a break, here's how to fix it. First thing to do is you come into your shot that you've edited already, and we see that in Wirecast, and I'll click click off of that real quick, 
Um, you'll see that in Wirecast, I believe it's eight and nine, uh, the icons are, are now yellow instead of white. So they're actually a little bit easier to see. So yellow means it's on and dark gray like that means it's off. So right now what I've got is I've turned the speakers off for the audio codec. So I can't hear anything out of the soundboard, but that's not what I want to do. I want to hear the soundboard, but I don't want to hear the mini recorder. So I come down to the mini recorder side. So I don't want to hear that camera audio. And now I've got the speaker icon turned off. So now the only thing coming through audio wise is going to be when I talk into here and that gets really loud really quick. So there's my audio setup. Uh, and for some of you, maybe you're not doing the scoreboard, whatever it is, but you have an announcer, that's what your layers would look like for that shot. I take that shot live and you can see that pops up over there. I'm going to move that down as far in the corner as I can get it. So now you can see that it's live over there. Nope. Nope. We've got to go back up there. Okay. We just got to go down. Well, it just, it just doesn't like that. There we go. That's just as close to the bottom as it gets. So you can see that it's live over here on the right and that my levels are going to be the same uh, no matter where um, on uh, for both the preview and for the live side. So something else that we want to add to that main shot then, of course, is the scoreboard. And everybody's taking a deep breath because we're going to do the scoreboard into nine. It's just like the biggest question we always get. I'm going to hit my plus button to add a layer. I'm doing a screen capture, and now what you'll see is I, that I've done a few uh, a few of these already. I actually can configure a screen capture that I've already set up. So if we come into screen capture and we see that we've got like seven or eight of these, that's probably not good. Let's just configure a screen capture that we already have. So I already have number one, so I might as well just add that. And the first thing you'll see is it comes into preview. And again, because I have it stacked on the top layer of this shot, uh, I'm, it's covering everything up. So with my screen capture layer highlighted, I'm going to come over to my properties. And uh, I do want to capture video, so I leave that checked. My capture type, I'm going to change to window. I do not want to see the cursor. And then I can come configure. And this, of course, is where, you, where it's pretty easy to go to Safari and the scoreboard app pops in, and there is the scoreboard itself. Obviously, it's too big, but because, boy, I can't see much of it, right? So I always do this order when it comes to cropping and scaling. I scale it first so that I can scale it kind of small. I do my cropping and chroma key, and then I rescale it to make it the right size that I want for the game. So I bring it down kind of small so that I can see it all on the page. And then I come down to crop. Of course, I crop from the left and I crop from the right. That was too far. And I crop from the top, which is apparently a piece of clothing as well. And I crop from the bottom. And then I come to my chroma key, which is the second one in from the left. I use my chroma key. Sometimes it works right away. For some reason, my color is pink. I don't like that. I click on my green. And it goes away. Sometimes you got to click around a little bit to find out just where it's supposed to be. Eventually, you'll find that green. Now, I am ready to scale this. So again, uh, with Wirecast 9, we don't have the snap to the bottom or snap to the top or the corners or anything like that. But we do have these handy guidelines. And so if I uh, drag left and right, you'll see my, my yellow line right down the middle. That way, I know that I've got my scoreboard centered in the shot. Now I can come back to my scale and make that as big as I want. Somewhere around 40 to 45% is usually about uh, what looks pretty good as far as the logo scoreboard. Stack works a little different. Um, we can show you that uh, some other time. But again, this is not about the scoreboard specifically. This is about the layers, right? So now my layers that I've got brought in here are the mini recorder, the codec, uh, which is my soundboard, and this screen capture, which is my scoreboard, which, I'm sorry, the codec, which is a soundboard, and this is the scoreboard. Sorry, too many, too many boards in there. So I have got uh, a shot, and boy, that looks good. That would be the way that I would want our main shot for a game for football, basketball, uh, volleyball, whatever it might be. That is probably what I would like for our main shot. But just in case, we want to add something a little bit more. Let's add a media file. Uh, this was something that uh, Taylor and I did for our game of the week on Friday, actually. 
And um, what I can do is instead, it's not going to be a video. It's not going to be extra audio or a network thing or an overlay or background, anything like that. It's just a media file. I go down to my bottom left. Now, this is a part of the organization of hopefully what your streaming laptop looks like. I have a folder on my desktop that I just labeled Wirecast. And what I do is I bring all of the files that I put into a stream. It might be school logos. It might be a Game of the Week logo. Uh, it might be the uh, commercials that we use from our, our advertising partners. It might be a, spot, a, sport, a uh, sportsmanship video that we created last year. All sorts of different things. I've got music in here. I've got the Strive logos in here. All of those, all of those files I put in this Wirecast folder. And then from the Wirecast folder, I put them in to Wirecast itself when I go to build those shots. So I want to add, let's say I want to add this Cornerstone Bank logo. Uh, and I'm going to do that. And it's going to add it as a layer. And obviously, it's going to bring it in as its full size. So now, just like the scoreboard, I can resize that. So I can scale it down. And then I can move it up into a corner. And now when I hit that shot live, I can move that down a little bit. Now we can see over here that uh, we have our Cornerstone Bank logo up in the corner. Uh, we have our scoreboard at the bottom and we have the only audio coming through is the soundboard. Now, if I was to set up for a game, the very next thing I would do after I have my main shot ready is I'm going back into that main shot and I'm going to my shot layers. And what I'm going to do, because the first thing that I brought into that was the mini recorder, that's what it automatically names the shot, but I can always rename this shot. Now, in six, Wirecast six and seven, you gotta click that, I think you gotta click the gear button and rename it. In, I'm sorry, in, in five and six, you gotta click the gear button, rename it. In seven, eight, and nine, you can just go to the shot and click on the name. So I'm gonna call this one my main shot. That way I know, and actually whoever's running Wirecast for my game, knows that that's my main shot and when the game is going and an announcer is talking that's my main shot that's my go-to thing even if we're running the switcher um, I've got a main shot now I've got a second person that's switching the cameras uh, but I still have my main shot that's got the scoreboard it's got the soundboard it's got my cornerstone logo in there as well and it has the feed from the mini recorder which is coming from the switcher so even if I've got multiple cameras like that uh, I'm still bringing it into one shot so now my next step that I would do, I've got all the layers that I want in that main shot. A sneaky little device though is called duplicate. I can duplicate an entire shot and now it makes a copy of main. So I can click on my new shot and if all I wanna do is change the audio, I can leave the scoreboard exactly how it is. I can leave the, the Cornerstone Bank logo exactly how it is. I want the mini recorder still in the shot. I just wanna change the audio. I select it. I can uh, remove it, first of all, and then I can add something else. Ah, look at this, I've got my media files in my Wirecast folder that I so aptly name. And I come into here and I find my MP3s, which is titled The Right Time, because it was fun from a couple years ago for, from PHL. And I can have it on top. Now here's the thing about audio, it doesn't really matter what order of the layer it is. Audio is audio. And if it's on and the speaker is on, we're going to hear it. Um, obviously, if I come back down here and I turn on the mini recorder again, I'm going to hear that mini recorder sound. Don't really want to do that. Uh, for instance, if we come over here, now we will see that not only would it have the music playing, but you can see that that's my voice being picked up by the camera, which is actually way over here. Um, about seven or eight feet away from me. You can still hear that it's, or see that it's picking up my voice. So if I shut that off though, now the only thing that's gonna happen is when I hit this shot to go live, my music will start to play. And if we come over here, you can see that our music is now playing. One note, as far as the music goes, I never have music all the way up when I set it into a shot. So I always select that music go to my speaker icon and I actually turn that down to around 50% and then I take that live and you'll see how that dropped that level. So now someone that's watching, the reason I do that, someone that's watching, especially on a phone or an iPad, something like that, 
even if we've got an announcer and it's an announcer that gets into a game and there's plenty of kids that are doing games and that is awesome and I highly encourage it just to try it at least. Maybe you announce a JV game just to practice a few times before you do a varsity game. Nothing wrong with that. But usually, even if you have an announcer, having music is just a different amount of volume. And if you bring a full volume song into a timeout, that's going to be pretty jarring to watch, be watching a game, hear an announcer, and then all of a sudden your music during a timeout is pretty loud. So I always bring my music in at about 50%, and then I, I go from there. So now my music is not near as loud. I still hear it uh, if, I'm, if I'm the viewer, uh, but it's not as, as big of a deal, if you will. And then, so what I want to know uh, as, as the person wanting Briarcast is, why do I have a copy of Maine? Well, I don't want that. Um, it's not my main shot, but I can make it my music shot. That way, very easy to discern that I've got my main shot over here. That's my announcers and all of my setups because I've done my layers correctly. And then I have a music shot that has music instead of the announcer. All Everything else looks the same. And the biggest thing also is that your viewer doesn't know the difference. All they know is the audio changes from a song to your announcer. So that, that's one really cool way. And then uh, we want to bring in maybe more shots. I uh, was just working with Sutton this morning. They had some cool ideas. They had a, a template uh, created that had looked like wallpaper of, uh, of the Sutton Phillies and the Mustangs. So they had one, one screenshot that was uh, the Mustang logo and then Sutton Phillies and then Mustang logo and then Sutton Phillies. So kind of went in a diagonal, covered the whole page was a nice, was going to be a nice transition wallpaper. So you can do that. You can do commercials, whatever it is. And again, all you have to do, add a media file, hit your plus button in your master layer, add a media file. And you can come up here. And this is one of the sportsmanship PSAs that we put together for the NSAA last year. Uh, I bring that in as my shot. It comes in down there. It titles itself. So I can always retitle it, whatever I want, PSA perhaps. Um, and then I can come over to my properties and I always double check this. With, with seven, eight, and nine, it became a lot easier to set defaults and to change these things. I know in five and six, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get, um, I'll get to your email, Daniel, in just a little bit. Um, but it was kind of a pain to get to the point where you could actually tell this when finished to remove and, and all of that. You can actually set a default now. So I always set the default when I bring in a video that when it's finished, it will remove. And I do not want to remember the position when not live. So that means it's always going to start at the beginning uh, and begin playing when, I, when the media becomes live. If you uncheck that, when you hit live, make the shot go live, nothing will play right away. You have to physically go over and push play on it again. So that's just kind of a, if I want the shot to go live, I want it to play anyway. Rarely would you have a case that you didn't want that to happen, but it's a check mark. You can make sure just as long as that's checked, you're pretty good. And then I've got my commercial in there and the whole thing is in there. By the way, all of these uh, sportsmanship PSAs are available for download on the NSAA website under the media file. And they're the ones that we shot last year, and they look pretty cool. Um, so again, we're talking about the layers of Wirecast today. So I've got now the only thing in this layer, because it has it's a fully produced file, is I've got my uh, my commercial, and and that's it. That's all I need. I need the the audio comes in the commercial, and you can see that it has removed because the commercial is done. I need to tell it to do something else, so I can go back to my music shot, and now you can see that my music once again, plays. But what happens if we have a situation where we have not created a full video with audio file and we want to do it within Wirecast? Again, with the power of layers, we can do that as well. So we're going to go back and we're first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a media file. And in this case, why don't we just set up a shot that looks black except for the Strive buttons and let's go with the uh with the vertical version so i've now created this oh that's a terrible logo taylor yeah we're not going to use that
we're going to go back and we're going to find our right file. And again, all in our Wirecast folder that we left on the desktop. By the way, spacebar opens preview. You guys know that, right? That looks marginally better. Well, we got to clean some things up here, don't we? That's JPEG. Don't want a JPEG in there. I think my PNG of my play button should look good. So that's exactly what we're going to bring in. So now we are going to have the Strive play button. And that, when I double click it over here, is the only thing is the only thing on a layer. It has no sound because it's just a PNG. Now I can add sound to it, right? So now I can add my music once again. Maybe I add a different shot to it or a different song. And how about larger than life? It's, it's, it's a good song, trust me. Uh, so now I've, I've got my song in there. I can, uh, again, come in to make sure that when it's finished, it's gonna remove. But in this one, I don't want it to remove. This is a commercial, this isn't a commercial that is uh, a set amount of time, right? I want, I kinda want this to be going whenever I need it to. So in this case, I want this file to loop when it's done. So I want it to go back to the beginning. Uh, remember the position when live? Nope, I want it to jump in where, or I want it to jump back to the beginning wherever but I just wanted to loop in this case uh, for this file. And again, because it's music, I always bring it down to around 50% or so. Now I can take this shot live and now that's the only thing I'm gonna see. I've created my two layers on this shot that has the play button logo, and this might be your school logo, and then it has uh, some royalty free music, that's important as well, uh, is, is in my layers. So those are my two layers for this uh, shot for this for this shot and now I've got um, maybe uh, maybe we call this post game right so now I've renamed this one so I've got my main shot during the game that's got my announcers it's got my mini recorder so it's got my camera coming in it's got my audio codec that's the soundboard for the announcers to talk screen capture that's the scoreboard and it's got my cornerstone bank logo up in the corner because it's a sponsored game Right, so I have my main shot, I have my music shot, which the only thing that has changed is, and I wanna change, I'm gonna put my Cornerstone logo on top, just for the sake of the order. Um, the Cornerstone bank that is still there, the screen capture is still there, the mini recorder is still there, all I did was change the audio, right? Perfect, did that. Now I've got a PSA, again, a fully produced commercial, so I don't need anything more on the layers except that commercial, and then I did basically a, a logo screen, if you will, that I did the logo and I did um, some music as well. So uh, a lot of, lot of different ways to use the layers within Wirecast. There is one other thing that I can do that I wanna show you about the master layers. And again, if you're one of our new Strive schools or maybe you've got a new group of students, you've been around with Strive for a while, but you've got a new group of students, I would highly recommend having three shots. That would be main, music, and this post game shot that even if it just has a logo and some music with it, that's it. That's your shot while you're tearing everything else down, you're tearing the camera down, you're tearing the soundboard down. That's what the stream is still seeing. That would be good to have just as a backup. Those would be like the three, the three basic shots I would have every time I set up, I set up something to stream for a ball game or concert or whatever like that. Then there is one other thing that I want to show you as far as the master layers. And up here in, in our master layer, uh, we are going to add the mini recorder. And I want to show you why it can be cool sometimes to actually have the mini recorder by itself on the bottom layer or on a second layer and have other overlays on top. So we are going to put our video capture, which is the mini recorder, on the second layer. And you can see right off the bat, the first thing that happens is now my shot, because I have both the uh, post game logo and the mini recorder are both in the preview, I see both of them. I would, I would see that music as well. That's what's coming in there. Uh, I wanna uncheck my voice. So now the camera isn't gonna come in there. So if all I had live was, was this camera shot, 
I will see it, but I won't hear anything, right? The only thing I'm gonna hear is that what's up here. If I clear this top layer, now I'm going to get rid of that logo. I'm also going to get rid of the music that was within that logo. So now when I take this live, I have the active camera, so I have the mini recorder coming in, and I have no other audio because the only thing here is the mini recorder. Not the top layer is, the, the thing that's live is the cleared layer, and nothing else is there. So what else I can do is instead of just having this, um, this play button, is I can actually run my scoreboard in a separate layer. And again, this is for probably the more advanced schools. So I'm gonna set up that scoreboard that I just had. And again, I need to uh, come in to uh, recapture this and reconfigure it, but it's going to be by itself on its own layer. And I'm gonna capture the window and I'm gonna show the cursor and I need to configure it. And I need to go to Safari and the scoreboard app pops in. I'm going to scale it down. And for the time being, I'm just going to leave it just like this at the top. And we're going to pretend that I finished setting up the scoreboard, right? So now what I've got up here is, is if I did not have any announcers, I could set up one shot that has this post game. And again, I'm looking at my layers. So within, with now we've got multiple layers of multiple layers, right? It's, it's kind of like Inception like that. So I've got multiple layers in this shot, my post game. So I've got music and my, I've got my logo here. On this layer, the only thing I've got is my screen capture. Well, if I clear the whole layer off, I've got nothing here for, for anything else. There, there's except for the mini recorder that is on the second layer. So again, whatever's on top of something else, that's what we're gonna see. So if I put my screen capture on top of it, now I have a screen capture, I have a video, I have no audio. So what I could do here is I could add to this shot on top is I could add my audio capture and I could go to my codec and I could hit add and now I will have my audio coming in and again this is if I pick up my headset and start talking into it there it shows up. So now I've got a screen capture and I've got my post game and um, I've only brought in the mini recorder one time because what I would do then over here is I would probably not have this main shot or at least from the main shot, I guess I could leave it, I could leave my cornerstone logo and I could remove my screen capture and I could remove my codec and I could remove my mini recorder. So let's say I wanted, uh, I wanted one shot that just had the cornerstone logo up in the corner. Well, now that's what I've got. So I've got my cornerstone, which I would rename. So I've got my cornerstone logo. I've got one shot that has the scoreboard and I have one shot that has the, um, the Strive logo and music. So on one of these, yeah, I've got my audio codec here. So I've got, uh, and let's get rid of, The screen capture let's get rid of the mini recorder on my music shot so now I've got uh, music with cornerstone I've got just cornerstone I've got strive logo with music and I've got uh, soundboard with scoreboard so now I've only brought in the video feed one place right on the bottom layer so you can see how you can actually add a bunch of different graphics. Uh, we will be at the Mudecus Volleyball Tournament on Thursday, and I guarantee you Marcus Shear is probably going to come up with uh, at least one or two cool graphics about a team. Sorry, I'm going to put Marcus on the spot. Uh, about the team, and it will be a cool banner, and we will just select the banner of whoever wins third place in the B division, championship of the A division. Um, so we'll have kind of all of that prepared and be able to bring all of those in on this top layer while only having the video feed in on the second layer. And obviously then if you get real good, well, you can use all five layers. Probably takes a bigger screen to do that though. So that's really what I wanted to talk about with Wirecast today. Um, as far as the layers, that's, uh, that's kind of the big deal. We went over the scoreboard real quick there. Uh, I'm going to stop my sharing. Uh, so that we can uh, bring all of this area. Oh, I did not even see Marcus was there. Marcus, how you doing, man? I'm going to unmute him.
There he is. Uh, and I'm going to open it up for questions for you guys. And if I've got you muted, let me know. Every, every, everybody's muted. Andy, you got a question? No, we're good. No, no we're good. good. Okay. Um, I just think the this new Wirecast looks a lot easier than the old one we have right now. So I'll get in contact with you later about upgrading that. But I'd like yeah. to look on that. It, it's like, and, and actually it was a little slow because I'm doing this with Zoom too. Um, so if, when things took just a half second to open, normally it opens a little faster than that actually. Um, yeah, nine is, nine is pretty nice if you, if you have that availability. And the bell just rang in Pender if you didn't see that. It's lunchtime. If it was another class, they'd stay, but it's lunch, so they're gone. Okay, well, yeah, if it's lunch, I don't blame you then. Uh, Don, do you have any questions? We're doing all right. We're still trying to. We're sure trying to figure out the scoreboard situation because my laptop isn't where the kids are when they're where the camera's at because of the way it we're set up. So we're still trying to figure out how scoreboard's going to work for us during basketball season because um, we send a camera feed to our wiring closet, split it out, send it to the TVs. We're kind of complicated. Um, I have a trial of live title or something or other, blue something. I don't know. I, it's in my email. I have just trying to survive right now, school starting, and so I haven't had a chance to get into that much. But that's our big challenge is how we're going to make that scoreboard work moving forward because we lost the sports cast program. The sports cast, which is – and tell me again, that was – it's not supporting – on a anymore right yeah yeah that's so, a sports gas thing i have a random idea on that Marcus i love that. random ideas so like, if you if your school is really that wired and that connected i would maybe have a laptop next to your camera and send a video feed from your computer to through your network and then back in, so your actual streaming computer would have two capture cards then, one for the camera and one that's basically like another a du duplicate monitor from your laptop running the scoreboard by the camera. So just think of it as like, as if you had two cameras, mm -hmm. the second one's right. going to be your laptop. Right. Well, and, and, and you need some conversion on some of the video feed, but like if your school is really that wired. I just have two Cat6 cables that run back to my room to a Kramer box. I'm not super techie. It's just that my Kramer box sits in my wiring closet that goes to my monitor and my commons. And then, so the Cat6, we convert HDMI to Cat6. It goes to my closet, plugs in in my Kramer box, and goes back out Cat6. And so I'm, I'm not familiar with the Kramer box. Is that where – how does it get into your streaming computer? Um, the it, it's a direct lot, so it's a direct. It comes in. We don't have the mini recorder for. We have a silver box from um, instead of the mini recorder, and yeah. so I can yeah. put HDMI into it, and then HDMI goes out of that little box into my Kramer box to send to my TVs. Yeah, they have they have the intent. You have like an intensity show. Intensity. Yeah, I was trying to think of the name of it. Oh, yeah. Intensity extreme. Or shuttle or extreme, one of the two. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's an extreme. It's Can you just move that down the line? So like, if your line is camera in the gym to the Kramer box into your computer, can you just move that shuttle or intensity, whatever version it is? Extreme. We thought about taking the laptop up to the um, top and doing and trying that, but then that means I have a two thousand dollar laptop sitting in my bleachers because that's where the camera feeds come from yeah and that makes me very nervous because i'm asking junior high kids to run it right and so that is where it, it comes into play it's my student managers running my camera i don't have a broadcast team because everybody that's on my streaming class has um is in sports except for a couple boys this fall and so we don't have the ability to like run I feel like I'm asking a lot of my junior high kids to be able to do anything other than run the camera because sometimes that's a hard enough task for them to do. 
I, I guess I don't mean that to be mean, but just like getting them to focus on one thing. So if I start adding more complexity to that, that worries me a little. Right. But I, that's an idea. We've talked about that actually is moving the, the laptop up there. Cause we do have a sound box up there that we could maybe put a shelf in and put it on and, and stuff. It just makes me very nervous because then somebody's got to be responsible for getting it out of there and it not walking off with somebody. And right. And yep. All all things that uh, that in the cheap to... seats up in the junior high section that could be very bad for me. Right. Right. <laughs> but we're gonna try that that blue Titler Live stuff and see. It's okay. kind of pricey. Um, I don't know. It, it's a we could go back to putting two cameras in too and running two cameras. That's, I mean, how we used to do it when it was uh, Ustream. We would run one camera that just sat on the scoreboard and do a picture and a picture shot. And we could go back to that. I just hate anything that I do that makes it more complicated makes me nervous just because I don't, I, I'm never here when this is going down. It's me, my five students, because my kids attend another district north of here, and I have three kids playing sports this fall. And so I'm not here when this is going on, so I want it to be as simple as possible. Right. Yep. And, and that's why Sportscast was such a good thing for you guys. Yeah. It worked like a champ. We added the shot, and the scoreboard showed up. And, I mean, it just worked. My kids never had a problem with it. Yeah. And so that I was really kind of – ticked about that because we put the money and investment into that and they just quit developing the software yeah um yeah that stinks uh i wish there was a better a better uh workaround for that but uh you know we'll, we'll keep trying stuff and, and i'm curious to see what you can come up with with the uh the, with the title or live um i i've played around with title or live a little bit just more of a transition screen um but yeah, I, I know there's some scoreboard stuff in there. I'd be curious to see what all you guys I'm going to do a call with them um, maybe later today if I can get it scheduled to call their tech support line and have them help me get it set up and just try it for the volleyball game tomorrow night. Sure. And if it's something we like, I, I know that my boss would be okay with buying the software. It's a one-time fee for now. And then I think um, – I can't remember. I'd have to go back and read, but like it's a minimal update after that. Okay. So I'll let you know as we kind of get into that a little deeper, how that all works out. Um, I know we're a little strange, but I know there's some other schools in our area setting up the kind of the same way. So um, where they have the, you know, we want one stop shop. We turn on one camera and it goes to our commons. It goes to our stream. It goes because it's hard to get personnel in a small school to run all that. And me being a mom of five kids in Holdridge makes that even more hard. More By the fun. way, your player went down last night. It did. I was yeah. watching the Holdridge York game because I had a game in Holdridge last night. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> it came back. Uh, yeah, that was uh, the cast had some funny stuff happen real quick. And, and we I, knew it when it went down because we, all of a sudden our support number went ding, 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 ding. Uh, and we did not win the lottery. Uh, it, was, it was not uh, even my – I texted. I'm like, well, I thought it was my phone because my iPhone X still does not work real – the app does not always work. And so I'll run this – I'll jump on Safari and get it to work. And so it's not always working well on my X. And, and Taylor told me a while ago it was because I had the iPhone X. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> but um, I thought it was me. So then I get home. I hurry home after Sabrina's game. And I'm like bringing it up on my iPad. I'm like, ah, that's not working. So I turn my laptop. And I was like, okay, either I'm really dumb or I can't. And it was like right at the end of the first set. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> and they didn't say that they were streaming the JV game. I felt bad. I didn't catch it till the third quarter because my sophomore was playing JV. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't on the schedule. So Yeah, not uh – when when schools stream JV, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, and not every time that they stream JV does that end up on the schedule, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it was fine. I mean, it it was just one of those deals. Like Sabrina played at four thirty in Holdridge, and Sam played at five thirty in York. There's no way I can do both. And I'd left Sabrina's game to go to McCook on the week before, so that was my, and I didn't want to go to York. 
that's all right. <laughs> two hours from home. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I was laughing about that last night. He's like, it's back up now. And I'm like, yeah, I know I'm back watching it, yelling at my iPad. <laughs> cool. So, um, all right. We'll do some check-in. I'll see what I can come up with. We're, we're working through stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So. Yep. Andy Olson, any thoughts, questions, Wirecast-wise from you, sir? I came in late, so I'm just curious if I need to jump on the Wirecast 9. What do I need to do? Um, you guys, what, what are you guys on right now? Do we have you on 7 or 8? I think 7. Is it 7? Um, the, the biggest thing with, with uh, going to 9 is if your laptop updates to High Sierra instead of just Sierra, um, then Wirecast 7 probably will not work, and then we'll, we'll need to – to do the upgrade. But nine will work on both. Nine, sh nine should work. Nine will work on high Sierra, but not Sierra. Ah, I see. Okay. So keep in mind of the, the updates and then make right. the switch. And, and what so, do I need to do to make this, the upgrade to, to nine? Uh, the upgrade for nine is 275, um, which is the way we can get it for you, which is cheaper than if you guys just go to Telestream and get it. I think it's like 320 or 330. Um, okay. so if, if you do want to do that, um, let me or me or Taylor know, and we will okay. get that for you. And, um, it's a, it's a couple of files, um, that we send your way and, and a quick upgrade. Sounds good. And, uh, and build the template, but yeah, that's, that's about it as far as upgrading. Okay. That's all I need for now then. Cool. Thanks. Hey, Eric, Marcus, have you, have you Wirecast 10 yet? What's that? Have you tested Wirecast 10 yet? No, it's out, and it came out like two weeks after we upgraded or, or you know, installed all of this for our new schools. Um, and then we did, we're in the process of upgrading everybody else, and then 10 came out. Um, we have not gotten 10 yet. We haven't anyway. Um, uh, I, I don't know what is – I haven't even looked at – I've been so busy, I haven't even looked at the notes to see what all they added, if anything. So that's kind of why we stuck with nine for now. Um, so even, even those schools with nine, you'll still get the pop-up window that says there's a newer version of Wirecast. And, um, but we haven't, we haven't, we haven't done anything with 10 yet. So we're not fully comfortable saying, yeah, all our schools need to be on 10. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll get it probably maybe after, after football season, once we get into basketball, we'll probably play, we'll probably get it and play around with it during basketball season. Do you think we should wait then to upgrade? Um, and if yeah. that's a possibility coming up. Well, just to let you know, the way we upgraded, because we were, I think we were on 72, is that when I bought nine, I got 10 free. Oh, you did get 10 free. Yeah. Well, that's nice. So, like, well, what I would check up? is open Wirecast on your computer and then go check for updates and then go to the buy purchase tab and see what deals they have running. Because I got in on a nice deal and to see if that price is different. Because that should be different than just if you went to the Telestream website. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I, Marcus is our deal finder. Add baby. All, always. Um, yeah, we will. Uh, we will take a look at that. Cool. Um, what else? Did you talk about how you can see the drop frames? Wirecast. Um, I, you know, I really didn't today. Um, because that was like the one of the biggest advantages of us upgrading to nine. Um, and I noticed that some of the placeholder things we had running really were the cause of our drop frames. And so okay. when we played regular PSAs, we were fine. But like I had a shot that had it had our capture card shot. It had a looped audio clip of like a 70 second audio clip a 10 second video looped clip and a png so it had a lot into it and that's where we were getting our drop frames and our older version didn't tell us that so that i could easily yeah. see just don't play the i have to modify that shot. right okay i guess i guess i've never I thought you, so you couldn't see it on, was it six? Uh, what I don't know, whatever, whatever version we were on. Plus we're, we're also on PC. So maybe it was slightly. Right. Different. Yeah. That might've been different too. I was trying to, I was trying to think of 
maybe 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 in seven is when you could start to see those that that just kind of put it there it was just built in like that uh to see your frames but yeah that's definitely helpful to to see that because then because usually when you start dropping frames you know some problems about to happen it's just a matter of what it is anyway um Cool. I guess I can.